Hello and welcome to the album and it's time for Q&A number 4, part 2. Okay, so the first question we have is uh, C... Uh, right, okay. C Nation 77995. And he says, How long have you been collecting vinyl records? Well, I've been collecting vinyl records since February 2012. And in fact, you can see the first month as I made a video. My... Um, CDs and vinyl I bought recently for 2012 was the first one ever to have vinyl and that came about basically we were sort of um, tied in in our, in our basement and uh, I came across my mum's old record player and also found her old vinyls as well and as well she doesn't use them anymore I mean you know people don't tend to as much I decided to take this as yeah really I still have it it was very small it had speakers built into it very sort of cool looking and this was like the first time I'd even seen vinyl records and I never had them it's you know really exciting to be honest and I found some really cool stuff I mean there's a, there was a, a gold sort of like bronzish version of Motorhead's No Sleep to Hammersmith which oh my god you know a t absolute ton of status quo about 10 albums of those ACDC back in black for those back to rock you know this for long live rock and roll as I said this here you know um the Queen hits there you know Quite a lot of awesome stuff, and of course, Black and Black there, that you can't see it really well. But uh, yeah, I found loads of cool stuff, and yeah, I just wanted to see what it sounded like. I didn't expect to actually collect it. In fact, really, the only reason I wanted originally actually to take these LP records upstairs was actually just to put them on the wall. I was just going to use them as posters, and I went to a car boot that weekend because um, well, I wanted to get more to put up on my wall. And that was simply it. I didn't have any interest in actually really playing them. I played sort of Born in the USA when I found the record player. It sounded kind of cool. But, you know. And then the album that really sold me on vinyl, it was I bought um, Meatloaf's Bat Out of Hell, only 50p. I also bought, I think, Eagle's Greatest Hits as well, and also um, Meatloaf Dead Ringer, I'll sign. And, oh my god, Bass Out of Hell on LP, it just kicked ass. It was just amazing. I just listened to it, and it's like, I mean, I loved the album before, but it really just took the album to the next level for me, which is quite weird, because nowadays I, I got a better version of Bass Out of Hell, my gold version, which sounds way superior to the vinyl. But anyway, and yeah, I just fell in love with vinyl from then on, and decided to actually, well, listen to it, <laughs> instead of just put it on my wall. But, you know, doing both the best way, certainly, because it looks damn cool and sounds damn cool as well. Okay, another vinyl related question from Spiffingly Awesome Five. Great name, I have to say. What is the best way to know if you have a first pressing album? Very interesting question, I have to say. I'd say the absolute easiest way to see if you have an original pressing is the website uh, www.originalpressing.com. Link in the description below. And you type in the reference number on the back of the vinyl. And it uses the discogs.com database, which I have all my vinyls logged on discogs.com. I find it very um, handy to keep track. There's even an app I have on my iPod where I can basically see all my vinyl records if I'm at a car boot. I'm not sure if I have something. I can just check that. Really, really handy, I have to say. And then, if you really want to be very exact, I mean, of course, after you've established if it's you know, sort of the original pressing for whichever country you're in, then of course you could have a look at the little matrix codes on the inside, just um, just outside of the sleeve before the sorry, just outside of the label in the middle, and really, like uh, I'll just get a record out to show. Um, you know, I'm sure most of you know what I mean, but for those who are a bit newer to vinyl, might not. But see, you know, you have this area here, the sort of the wax, even though it's not really made of wax, but that's what people often call it. And there's the matrix codes. You can look, if you look very carefully, you can see things like A1, B1, which some collectors maintain is the only true first pressing if you have an A1, B1 instead of an A3, B4 or something, but really that's not quite true. Well, yes, it's called like my, you know, um, Dylan bringing it all back, bringing it back home, which I talked about in part one, that is an A1, B1, and that's very cool and all, but uh, in fact, many with sort of popular artists, for example, I'm sure this happened with Pink Floyd, that the record companies contracted it to various different plants, so an A1, B1 could have been printed exactly simultaneously to an A3, B4, and that would be no sound difference whatsoever. So, but, you know, that's what purest collectors. But that's basically the way, I mean, you know, the closest way, I suppose, you can get to determining first pressing. Okay, Morgan Davis asked, What is your favourite status quo album and why? Well, just had it here, that was the record I actually showed. 
because my status quo collection is pretty much all on vinyl. In fact, I think it is all on vinyl. We have on the level is my favourite status quo studio. I've moved to the side, bloody Christmas tree anyway. But yes, on the level, this is the one with Down Down, of course. It has the cover of the Chuck Berry song Bye Bye Johnny. Um, I saw the lights really good. I don't know, it's just a really solid album. I mean, there aren't that many sort of, you know, maybe standout tracks, but it's just a really solid, really fun pop rock album. And possibly my favourite Quo album overall, if not joint favourite to one level, is uh, the Quo Double Live album. I mean, it really is a classic Double Live album um, with, of course, you know, Caroline on it. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Caroline, Little Lady, which is on, on the level. Uh, Big Fat Mama. Bye Bye Johnny, um, wrote their cover, they, I'd say, on um, side four of this, their cover of The Doors, Roadhouse Blues, really good, they do a really long cover of it, very good, like a ten minute cover of Roadhouse Blues, it's pretty damn awesome. So, they're my favourite Quell albums, I always put them, okay, and also Morgan Davis, where do you buy all your records and CDs? Well, a variety of places, places like CEX, that's entertainment, HMV, I love car boots when it's sort of the spring, summertime, they're, my f they're where I get most of my vinyls, I'd say, probably 80% of my vinyls honestly come from car boots, maybe some ch from charity shops as well, except Oxfam can be a little bit overpriced, but in general charity shops, good. of course record shops, I love going through um, sort of 50p and £1 bargain bins, as I said, you know, I don't have that much money to spend on records, so, you know, I'm, you know, tend to to go for the more bargain ones instead of some you know awesome rare collector's item and also i love the exchange chain the vinyl exchange chain like um there's one in manchester which is just absolutely wonderful i never come out of that place without getting something just fantastic prices not as good for vinyl i find the out vinyl there it's way too expensive but the cds just fantastic prices absolute bargains i got there i think last time i was there i got like dylan's modern times for like a quid it's like oh my god and also Amazon, eBay. I mean, uh, yeah, that awesome. Okay, spiffing the awesome again. Um, do you play guitar? Yes, I do, and I have quite a few guitars. Uh, I've been playing guitar for um, probably about seven years, but seriously playing about five years because there was a period. I, I talked about this before, but I'll talk about it again. It's been a while. When I first got guitar lessons. Um, as a teacher, I'm not going to you know, mention his name, but um, I didn't particularly like him. I, I don't know, I, I, just, I wasn't that into guitar. I, sort of, I wanted the lessons, I wanted to learn, but I didn't want to practice. So I go to his lessons every week and be like, why haven't you been practicing? And it's like, I have, and I'd play and I'd sound like the exact same as I did last week. And then my parents would say, oh, you know, we'll stop the lessons and I start practicing. So then I'd like practice that day and then just put it down and I'd leave it to, in the dust. And Really, the moment was when I decided to uh, learn uh, Muses, Knights of Cydonia, the sort of the sound of da, 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 And at that point, I didn't, you know, I couldn't do the tremolo on it, you know, but I was just playing the notes, you know, da, 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 etc. And I just love that. I just love playing that song. I just kept practicing it and practicing it. And then soon after, um, I learned the Sweet Child of Mine um, riff. And that's just what really set me on guitar, and since then I started practicing, but, and then I got a different teacher, especially, so I say about five years seriously, I got a different teacher, who I liked a lot, but I was, I was doing grades, and I got to grade three, and the thing is, I just got bored of the grades, I, you know, they, they weren't that difficult, but they were just dull, as bloody dishwater, they really were, I hated the pieces, and I just didn't think it was for me. The grades, they taught a very, you know, a very technical way of playing, but I really wanted to just, you know, take a few years to just really expand my sort of, you know, playing, um, you know, learn to sort of develop more of my own style than just having a very sort of, you know, um, by the book type style. But yes, I have um, a few of my guitars, I say, I have a Fender Standard Stratocaster Mexican, uh, Epiphone Les Paul Standard, Epiphone SG, I think it's like a G310, something like that, and the Fender Acoustic CD140, and I'm getting a very, very cool electric guitar for Christmas, which I'll be making a video about. Oh my god, it is just so awesome. Sounds awesome, looks just mind-blowing. Okay. Abel Jansma 5. What do you think of the Deftones? I can't say I've really listened to them much. I know I've listened to like the odd song. Um, they're a band that's on my radar. If you see one of their albums cheap, I, I pick it up. Defo. 
But uh, I, I don't know what I've heard. There's nothing that's really captured me so far. But if you want to recommend any Deftones to me, then I'd be more than happy to check them out. Yeah, Def, I always like to listen to new stuff. Robbie Walker, are you going to get the Beatles Live BBC slash On Air albums or listen to them? Um, I'm vaguely aware of them. I saw them in HMV the other day when I just decided to pop in the, um, like during the week. And uh, yeah, I mean, Live at the BBC, I've just got my leg trapped somewhere. That was a bit odd, but uh, where was that? Yeah, the Beatles Live BBC. I can't say I know what's on them, but I might, I might give them a listen. Might, might even review them, maybe, you know, part of my. Beatles discography, which is going so quickly, of course. Definitely, you know, all the way up to Let It Be, if not just Rubber Soul. Uh, um, yeah, um, to us, I've got quite a bit of Beatles to listen to and review at the moment, so my Beatles quota for the moment is sort of being filled. Um, C Nation 77994 again, do you like Nine Inch Nails? Yes, to an extent. I think Diamond Spiles, Fantastic Am, The Fragile, really great record, but. Um, I need to explore a bit more, but other things I've heard, they can be a bit of a mix, but I didn't enjoy Hesitation Marks that much. I liked a couple of songs on it, but I thought others were a bit, uh, especially that pop-punk song. What the bloody hell was going on there? Seriously, bloody hell, Trent Reznor. That was like, bloody all-time low on a Nine Inch Nails album. What the hell is happening? Uh, but, uh, yeah, I, I definitely want to explore the bands a bit more, but I don't think they're going to be one of my favourite bands, but I, I can definitely see myself, I would say I'm you know, a casual fan of the band, Downward Spell, definitely want to get that album, there, and the Fragile I'll probably get as well, as I said. Um, Richard D, are you excited for Blackstone shows now? Hell yeah, I mean, Between the Devil and Deep Blue Sea was my album of the year for 2011, and it still stands, I mean, I haven't found an album from 2011, I would consider it better than Between the Devil and the Deep Blue Sea. I mean, bloody hell, what an amazing rock album that is, and I'm so excited for Blackstone Show's new album. Oh, hell yeah. Okay. Ah, uh, I'm saying okay again, aren't I? Um, will we have time for this? No, we won't have time for... Uh, he's just quick... Okay. Um, this is going to be the last person for this episode, so Danny G6835 asks... A few questions. Number one, favourite jazz album. Now, jazz, not saying I really know much about, but my, I'd say my favourite jazz album, probably like one of the only ones I've ever listened to, that's not a jazz, there's a lot of jazz influence stuff like, like, um, you know, things like King Crimson, that have a lot of jazz influence in their album Red, or uh, Matching Mole has some jazz influence, things like that, but um, in general I don't really listen to jazz, but I'd say Miles Davis' Bitches Brew, even though I wouldn't, say not, I wouldn't go out my way to buy that album, I have listened to it before, and I can understand why people rate it as one of the best albums ever, but it's not really my cup of tea. Favourite electronic album? I mean, I don't listen to any really electronic music, I don't know much about it, it's like the only real electronic artist I could probably name would be something like uh, Aphex Twins, that's because that's like Tom York's favourite band, but I'd have to say, even though I wouldn't really call them pure electronica, the closest I get, Radiohead's Kid A, you know, some Bjork stuff, like oh, Homogenic or something, that's the closest I get to electronica, but pure like electronic really doesn't appeal to me. Favourite hip-hop album? N.A. really, um, and not, not as in um, N.A. more as in not applicable, just made that clear. I don't like hip-hop at all. I've never found a hip-hop album as of yet that I've enjoyed, not a rap album. The closest I would say I get to that type of thing is Rage Against the Machine, but I wouldn't really call them hip-hop, but certainly rap-influenced rock, you know. So that's probably the closest. And then lastly, do you have a Last.fm account? Uh, no. No. <laughs> no, I do not. Okay, so yeah, time is running low on my camera. And this being Album Man. Thanks for watching, comment, subscribe. Tune into part three, which will be out soon. And long live rock and roll.